Praise God and welcome to your divine appointment, which is the media ministry of the Devon Jackson MD Ministries. I'm Dr. Jackson. Welcome to this study of the Word of God. We're so delighted you've joined us where we do study the international Sunday school lessons and we call this Thursday school, <clears throat> excuse me, because we studied the Sunday school lesson on Thursday, three days early, and so that way we'll be ready when Sunday comes. Amen. We're so delighted to let you know that also these Thursday school recordings, they are available on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to YouTube and search for Devon Jackson, MD. Over 150 videos, these Thursday school teachings, Sunday morning worship, uh, the prayer room where we pray together and other recordings. And we're so delighted to have you visit us there. Would you so kindly, when you go to YouTube, would you subscribe? That will raise our rating on YouTube so more people will find us and find these teachings about the sweet Savior. Will you help us in that regard? We'd appreciate it so much. And also, these recordings are on our Facebook page. And there on Facebook, under Devon Jackson, MD, uh, we have these recordings and other postings. And would you so kindly like our page? It makes a great difference. As well as like and share this video. Will you do that for me? Help me get the word out about Jesus. I'd appreciate that so much as we work together. Amen. Well, God bless you. We do study uh, these International Sunday School lessons. And on today, we're on lesson uh, for April the 25th. I want to say the 26th. April the 25th of 2021, lesson number uh, eight. And it's called The Nation's Plea. The Nation's Plea. Um, and uh, if you happen not to have a Sunday School book, you can Google the lesson for today's date or you can turn in your Bible to the book of Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 5. Amen. Uh, we're so grateful for the privilege to study God's word. Will you pray with me? Lord, we love you and we thank you. Uh, thank you for your word. What a treasure it is. Hallelujah. Your love letter to us in 66 sections. We're grateful. Bless us, O oh God. Open our understanding. Open our heart. Help us to receive your word and apply it and never be the same. Spirit of God, we can't do it, but we give ourselves to you. Transform us by the word of God. For this, we give you praise. Every soul that's listening and watching, I just want to pray for them in advance, God, that you comfort and strengthen. God, protect and keep. And do it for your namesake and glory. And we give you praise for it in the name of Jesus and amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're continuing uh, our unit that is dealing with uh, restoration. Uh, we had uh, the first lesson was uh, the suffering servant having to do with Isaiah 53 and the Lord Jesus himself. And that was the lesson for uh, the first Sunday. Amen. Of uh, the month of April. And uh, then we had the lesson about Ezra, the uh, faith and action preacher, amen, in terms of restoration, exiles coming back from their captivity in uh, Babylon and Persia. And then on last week, we had our lesson about Nehemiah, amen, the restoring wall builder, praise God. And if you missed that, we ask you to look at that because there are walls in our lives as well, amen. And then today's lesson is the nation's plea. Very interesting lesson uh, here in the book of Lamentations. Well, we first, of course, want to um, take a look at this book and the author. Um, this particular book of Lamentations, of course, the word lament. So Lamentations is a book of several laments. And to lament is to mourn or to be sorrowful, sometimes a regret. Um, and uh, this particular book has five chapters, and each of them are called basically a poem uh, of various uh, degrees dealing with lamenting. And uh, uh, the book, um, very significantly, um, is written by the great prophet Jeremiah. 
and uh, we know his great book, 52 chapters. Um, the ministry of that great man um, was during the time of the divided kingdom, and he ministered to the southern kingdom of Judah. And actually, the northern kingdom of Israel had already fallen. And Jeremiah was ministering to the kingdom of Judah at its last uh, many years there. Um, he ministered during the reigns of various kings, and they were not hearing the word of the Lord, and uh, they uh, mistreated him. Amen. They threw him in what's called a cistern. These are great uh, um, uh, pockets in the earth that have been dug out to hold water. And uh, when the water levels were low, um, they were actually pretty muddy. And uh, the bottom could be so soft, almost like quicksand, shall we say. And of course, sometimes mice and snakes and various things down there. Well, Jeremiah, preaching the truth, they didn't like, the king didn't like what Jeremiah was saying. And uh, he was warning them, listen, judgment's coming. You're going to fall to Babylon. Go ahead and surrender to him. Don't fight because this is going to happen. God is going to allow this judgment. You're going to go into Babylon, but it will be for 70 years. And God will allow restoration and come home, but, you know, surrender to the will of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes uh, uh, we're in trouble and our parents are saying, it's time for your chastisement. And we're like, no, I'm not going to be chastised. I'm going to run. We take off running. That's not going to cause the chastisement not to occur. You're just delaying the inevitable and maybe making it worse. Jeremiah said, you've sinned as a nation and judgment is here. They wouldn't listen. So they took Jeremiah and threw him down into one of these pits. Oh, how awful. And that's where the famous passage Jeremiah said that he said to himself, I'm not preaching anymore. I've been going through. People are rejecting. I'm not preaching anymore. He said, but the call and his ministry was like fire shut up in his bones and he couldn't stop preaching. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Lord, let our calling, our assignment, whatever it is, let it be like fire in our bones so that we persist and complete the job. Amen. So uh, the great Jeremiah ministered at a difficult time and he ministered faithfully and uh, he was still ministering at the time that Jerusalem fell when Babylon came under King Nebuchadnezzar and uh, destroyed the city. And uh, it occurred in different stages and it's quite a story. Amen. So he ministered through that difficult time and after uh, Jerusalem had fallen, uh, there were a few remnant that stayed in that area. And some say that uh, Jeremiah didn't remain in Jerusalem proper, but in one of the nations that was nearby. Um, but his heart, of course, was broken about what had happened to the wonderful Jerusalem uh, and his precious people. Now, he was known as the weeping prophet. That was even during his ministry. Amen. Uh, but now, with the book we're studying today, the book of Lamentations, this was written after Jerusalem has already fallen. The book of Jeremiah, the prophecies leading up to, amen, and uh, there may be portions at the end where actually the nation has, uh, uh, the city of Jerusalem has begun to fall, but Lamentations is written after the fall. And here he's putting forth his laments, amen, of what has transpired with the nation, amen? Uh, the book of Lamentations also, very interestingly, the five chapters, each of them as this poem that I mentioned, uh, uh, expressing different levels of, of lament. It's very interesting that um, the first four uh, chapters are an acrostic, A-C-R-O-S-T-I-C, where each uh, verse of the uh, chapter starts with a letter of the uh, Hebrew alphabet in order. For example, if I was to write an acrostic, uh, the first verse would start with the letter A, the next verse would start with the letter B, the next verse, letter C, the next verse, letter D, and so on. What does that tell us? There was a great deal of attention put into these writings. Here's a man, mourning, sorrowful, that his nation has fallen to judgment, but knows that God will someday, 70 years, they'll be back home, but is lamenting, why didn't we and what we could have done? Amen? And so those are the first four chapters. Then we come here, to chapter five, and it's very interesting um, 
that it's called, the, the, the subject today is the nation's plea. This, uh, uh, the fifth of the uh, oh. poems is not an acrostic, but it really is a prayer. And sometimes when we're mourning and we're sorrowful, we will uh, look back with regret and uh, lament things that have transpired. Sometimes people are mourning the death of a loved one. Sometimes they're mourning the loss of a, of a career or uh, a change in location. Sometimes we've been, by reasons of circumstances of life, have to move to a new locations and we're mourning the friends and family and acquaintances that we are having to leave as we depart. Many things happen. Here, his mourning is not for a person. This man of God is mourning on behalf of God's people. That's important because you and I, as the children of God, even though we have circumstances in our personal life, God wants us to love him, love his people, love his house, love the kingdom of God and the ministry to the point that should something happen with the ministry, your local church, amen, your pastor, your co-workers, your ushers, de deacons and music department, we should love the ministry enough that should something happen there, that all of our laments are not personal but we would lament about the ministry. Are you with me? And people don't lament about a thing for which they have no affection or love. We are to love God's people and his house enough that should something occur, we would lament for them. Amen. Let's take a look. Amen. Uh, the nation's plea. Um, and uh, we want to um, highlight as our Bible spotlight on today, to highlight the different kinds of prayers. There are so many different kinds of prayers, but we know that there are the ACTS, the acts of prayer that people speak of. And since today's lesson is a prayer, we're going to look and see how it fits into there. So many kinds of prayers. A stands for adoration. And this is giving uh, appreciation and worship, adoring God for just who he is. Amen. The letter C is for confession. Amen. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, our Bible Spotlight dealt in depth about the seven C's, the letter C. If you missed that, please check that out. The So confession. And then T is for uh, thanksgiving, thanking God, praising God gratitude for what he's done, appreciating what he's done. Amen. And then S stands for supplication. That's a petition or a request. And the word uh, supplication is not a lightweight kind of, you know, I would like to have this. Often the implication is that it's an intense request. Uh, it's pursuing God intensively about a matter. Amen. Seeking his face. Hallelujah. Pleading with God. So those are supplications, all different levels. Lord, I would like to Lord God, we've got to have it now. Oh, bless his name. Prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Now, each of those can be a prayer type of itself. In addition, an individual prayer in one sitting, we can cover all of those. We can adore God, confess, thank him, and make supplication all in a single prayer. Amen? And then in terms of people, whether you want to call it categories of prayer or types of prayer, there are prayers that have different areas of focus, a national focus. Sometimes it's on a segment of society. We're just praying for the senior citizens. They're in nursing homes. They're suffering in their body. Sometimes people are praying just about healing, just praying for healing. And of course, what we're going through this pandemic, sometimes prayers are focused just on the COVID virus and its impact, the lives that have been impacted by it, the people that are sick, those that have passed away, the essential workers, amen, that are dealing with it, the hospital, some of which are on overflow. So prayers can cover all kinds of different areas. Oh, glory to God. In today's lesson, praise God, and let me say on that subject of prayer, 
all of us as God's children are called and charged and commanded to pray. Prayer is a art that we develop. And when I say it's an art or it's a skill that we develop, it grows over time as our relationship with the one we're talking to grows. You know, you can have a more in-depth conversation with somebody you know well than you would with maybe a complete stranger. You don't have any point of reference. You don't know what they're into, what they like or dislike. You don't know where they're from, right? Someone you know well, there's a lot of history there. And there's a lot of experience there. And there's a lot of depth and richness to the conversation because you know them. Our prayer life, our communion with God, our Father, should grow, deepen, widen, become richer, fuller, sweeter, the more we know him. Oh, glory to God. So our prayers would take on all kinds of flavors and, and elements. Amen. From a brief prayer, Lord, I love you and I bless you. To Lord, remember me as I take on this project. God knows all about it. Hallelujah. Peter prayed one of the greatest prayers in the Bible. And he said three words, save me, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I know all of us at one time or another, we prayed the three word prayer, save me, Lord. Glory to God. Prayer, darlings, pray. We need to grow and develop in that prayer uh, element of the Christian life. Amen. And so today's lesson is a prayer. And so let us look at uh, look at this. Uh, and then uh, let me add to uh, while we're praying, there are styles of prayer that have to do with meditation, which is that quiet contemplation, quiet consideration and thinking on the things of God. And then there's vocal verbal prayer that can be high volume. It can be soft as a whisper, all of those in between sometimes even in a song. Hallelujah. When we look at today's lesson, we're going to see some of those elements of what we just talked about in our spotlight come out in today's uh, prayer. Amen. Here we go. Lamentations chapter five. The uh, writer, the great Jeremiah, notice starts out with the word remember. That's in verse one, but that goes all the way to connect down to verse 20. So if you have your lesson, you might want to draw a line. Remember, and then down in verse 20, forget. Those uh, uh, matters in those two verses are driving home a point. And then you also will see a connection between verse 7. And in verse 7, he speaks about how our fathers have sinned, our forefathers, our uh, generations before us. And you can connect that over to verse 16. All right, where he says, we have sinned, our generation. Amen? So let's proceed. Verse one, remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Wow, remember us. What's come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Look on our situation. Amen? Our situation is one of dire straits. Our, our, our families have been broken apart. The young, the strong, the healthy, the nobles, the leaders of our nation, uh, and multitudes of others have been taken away and deported into a foreign land of Babylon. Only a remnant is left. A lot of them are older or ill, or those that were uh, disabled were left behind, and a few other uh, cohorts were left behind. And the city is broken down. Many of us have had to leave because we can't stay there. There's no livelihood to be made there. And Lord, remember us. Look on our condition. Amen? Uh, so he's asking the Lord, remember. Verse 2, our inheritance. Now, these verses are very interesting. He begins to describe their situation. Look at verse 2. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. And one of the things about Hebrew uh, and the style of writing is they often will say the same thing in two different ways. A parallelism, it's called. Because two lines that are side by side are called parallel lines. So parallelism in literature is when you say the same principle two times back to back. It expands the understanding, but you're basically saying the same thing. Look here. He says, our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. Well, a stranger is an alien. 
and our inheritance and our houses, our land, all right? Our land is a major part of our inheritance. So what was ours? Somebody else has it now. Amen? Verse 3, we are, look at these, orphans and fatherless and our mothers are widows. Well, all three of those are conditions where there's been death, right? An orphan, both parents are gone. Fatherless, one of the parents, their father is gone. The widow, her husband's gone. Amen? So we're, it's like we have so much loss, there's abandonment at, at multiple levels. Verse 4, we have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. What was ours? Now we got to buy it from these strangers that have taken over. Look at verse 5. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and we have no rest. Oh, my Lord. What a lament. There's no rest, no peace for us. Verse 6. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians and to, uh, to be satisfied with bread. we are become beggars. We have to get our need from others. Amen. And this isn't just a matter of begging. Some of it, they would have to make purchase. But we have to stretch out to get help from these other places where before we did not have to do so. Uh, we've lost our self-sufficiency. Verse 7. Our fathers have sinned, right, uh, and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. So he's saying that generations in the past have sinned, and the consequences of their sins have fallen on us. But let's go over now to verse 16. And, and it is true that generation after generation, sin after generation after generation, those kinds of complications build. And uh, what grandparents and great-great-grandparents have done, whether it be good or bad, sometimes generations later, we're experiencing it. Amen? Some uh, four parents stored up millions and millions of dollars uh, and uh, they let their children inherit it. So generations later, they're enjoying the wealth. In the same way, there are other things that people build up that might not be uh, as beneficial for their descendants. Whatever it is, we can affect later generations. But our circumstances can't entirely be blamed on previous generations. Look over at verse 16. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. The crown fell off our head, right? As a crown, kings and queens and living uh, free and having power and having authority and all that that we experienced. The crown is off our head and we have sinned, right? So now he's bringing it home. So both elements are there. Why is this important? Some people blame all their problems on somebody else. I don't know if I'm talking to anyone like that. But no matter what's going in our life, we have to be real and be honest. Because even though some of it may be other people, for sure, we have to own our part of the problem. Amen? Because if we don't own it and we don't confess it, we'll never repent. A person never will repent of a thing if they've never confessed it. Amen? Oh, glory to God. And so that's important. So he talks here about our fathers have sinned and are not. They're already gone. They passed away. But we are bearing their iniquities, their hidden sins. Iniquities can be a hidden sin or it can be a deep sin. Amen? Some things are public and whatever. Other things are deeper internal. Amen? Other things are superficial. Other things have a, have a, have a root to them. Amen? Uh, and sometimes those are called iniquity. Uh, verse 8, servants have ruled over us. There's none that does deliver us out of their hand. Wow. The servant is ruling his former master. We got our bread with the peril or danger of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. We have to risk our life to get something to eat. Verse 10, our skin uh, was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. When there's times of famine, it's an uh, interesting process. As people progressively starve, uh, many times you can see a change in their skin tone. Their hair color can change. Oftentimes their hair color can get lighter. Um, the eyes can take on a yellowing uh, because of liver problems. Skin can take on a, a disturbed uh, tone in addition to the muscles wasting away. A lot of things. And he's just describing, in addition to all of this emotional stuff with, you know, uh, we've lost our crown and all this, but now we're begging for bread and even famine has set in. Wow. 
uh, they ravished the women. They raped the women in Zion, took advantage of them, uh, over overrode them, and the maids of the city of Judah. So in Zion, the women have been uh, uh, taken advantage of. Amen? Sometimes physical, specific rape, other ways they've been uh, overthrown and taken advantage of. So the women who would have been protected by their men, now the men are gone and the women are vulnerable. Verse 12. Princes are hanged up by their hands. The faces of the elders uh, were not honored. Amen. No dishonor. And that's a that's quite a torture that sometimes people use um, as a method for torturing people for information or simply for punishment. Uh, if you hang someone, uh, sometimes they put them in what's called stocks, where there's basically braces put around their wrists and they're hung from a high ceiling all that body weight pulling on the wrist, pulling on the shoulder, it can be quite a torment. And sometimes people, both hands and feet are, are connected at one time and the whole body weight is hanging from the wrists and from the ankles. Wow. Verse 13, they took the young men to grind and the children fell under the wood. Now this one, when it's investigated, um, it may not just be men working in a mill you know before they would have an ox grind in the mill and now have people do it but also um this refers to there's a, a job that only a slave would do sometimes only the female slaves of the lowest order the lowest of the lowest slaves they would have them do certain work in the mill and now the men are having to do a job not just a job a job that normally the women would do or the lowest slave anything to humiliate them Amen. They're doing these jobs. And there's also uh, an interpretation on this. In the mill, there's these heavy stones to be carried. And they made the men do it, treating them like a beast of burden. Rather than uh, being treated like a man, they're treated like an ox. And uh, the children fell under the wood. The children would have to gather the wood that would be used for fuel. Uh, 14, the elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. Well, the young men aren't doing their celebrations in the street like they used to. Uh, times of mirth and joy. And the elders used to meet at the gate. That was basically like city hall where business was taken care of. The elders are no more there. So people you would go to for counsel and advice because they were older. No longer there. 15, the joy of our heart has ceased. It's over. And dance has turned into mourning. Um, we already did verse 16, amen, dealing with the crown has fallen and we have sinned. Verse 17, for this our heart is faint, oh, but to give up, amen, for these things our eyes are dim. Glory to God. Verse 18, because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. And this foxes here is an animal that they call a jackal, J-A-C-K-A-L is another word for it. Um, and jackals tend to avoid wherever their people are. So only areas that are desolate and empty and ruins, you'd see the jackal running around. This was a sign that Jerusalem has long since been destroyed and deserted, that now the jackals are running around. Wow. Verse 19, thou, O Lord, remainest forever. Thy throne from generation to generation. Now he's turning a corner. He's called his laments. He's described the condition. He's mourned it. And now he's turning a corner. He's saying, Lord, you're eternal and nothing turns you around. You're forever and forever. Jerusalem has fallen, but you haven't. Hallelujah. Our city's destroyed, but you're not destroyed. Oh, glory to God. I'm lamenting all of these losses, but we haven't lost the God of heaven. You are forever. Oh, glory to God. Help me shout it. God, you're forever. Oh, bless his name. Somebody need to take joy in that today. God is forever. Amen. So in a prayer, you can lament and tell God all about it. Unload our heart. God told us to come and to talk to him. Amen. But now he's transitioning because he's going into worship, celebrating the eternal nature of God. Look at verse 20. Therefore, or wherefore, dost thou forget? That takes us back to verse 1 where he's saying, Remember, Lord, and so on, so on, so on. Now he's getting here to saying, Lord, why did you forget? How could you forget, right? And of course, the Lord never forgets anything. But he says, wherefore do you forget us forever and forsake us so long time? 
Lord, have you written us off forever? I mean, will you have mercy? Seems like it's so much to bear, Lord. <laughs> He's telling God all about it. Look at verse 21. Turn unto us, O Lord. Now we're in petition. Are you with me? So he laid out all these different things, a morning, a meditation. You can imagine him sitting there just kind of, you know, talking about all these different conditions. Then he makes the transition to worship God because God's eternal. And then he asks God a question, Lord, uh, 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 will you forget us forever? And then 21, turn, Lord, petition. Turn thou unto us, O Lord. Not just praying for me, Jeremiah, but for the nation. Turn unto us, O Lord, and we shall be turned and renew the days of old. Restore restoration. Verse 22. But you have utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth with us. It's interesting. Sometimes when we are in depth of despair, we will almost give on a contradiction. He's asking God, Lord, remember us. Restore us from the days of old. Then he says, Lord, you've written us off forever. But we know that's not true. We know from uh, the word of God that even though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises up again because of his God. Father, we love you and we bless you. We thank you for the privilege of prayer of every kind and of every style and of every method and on every subject. And thank you that we have an audience with the king. Thank you that you always hear us. We bless you for that because we come in the name of your sweet son, Jesus. Now, Lord, all those under the sound of my voice, hear that cry. Hear their prayer, hear their petition, words that have come from their mouth. And sometimes a prayer is so deep till it didn't have words to go with it. Sometimes it's just a weeping. Sometimes it's just a mourning. Sometimes it's almost a mumble. Hallelujah, as the voice is so low. But oh God, we're going to tell you all about it. Even if we have to cry while we're doing it. Even if we have to mumble a moment while we're trying to get the words out. We're going to tell you all about it. And we're going to take our burden to the Lord and leave it there and bring worship and adoration and trust the living God and wait on you. For this, oh God, this privilege, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. Hallelujah. And I encourage my brothers and sisters to remember this. The God of the Bible is real. Prepare for your divine appointment with him and believe your God. Until next time.